Hello, my name is Justin Fischetti, and today I'm going to show you how I made this baseball bat. To start this project, I'm breaking the boards down into more manageable sizes. This ash board was about 10 feet long, and I cut it roughly in half so I could put it through the table saw more safely. Now I'm ripping the ash down into the width of strips that I will need to make boards that I can then cut into the segmented pieces. And I can run my boards through the planer to get them all to the same thickness. Now I need some walnut banding, so I'm running the same piece of wood through the table saw with the same face up against the fence each time to give me a book match appearance. All the grain seems to be replicated. Now the inside of the zigzag pattern is going to be made out of yellow heart, so I can cut strips of that into the same thickness as all the other boards. This will allow me to glue them up into a big solid piece that can then be cut on the table saw. For glue, I'm just using Type Bond 3 as it is waterproof and will be strong. Now I can arrange the boards going ash, walnut, yellow heart, walnut, ash, and then repeat that same pattern in the next board. And then I can run those boards through the planer to get them all consistent thicknesses and smooth so that when I cut the segments there are no bumps changing the angles. So in order to not have the pieces that I cut off of the boards get stuck in between the blade and the fence, what I'm doing is having first off a stop block that doesn't reach all the way to the blade, that way there's more room here. And second, I have this hose coming down, and because the pieces are too large to suck up, I'm going to have it being blown down, so then the pieces will be blown out that way and I can collect them afterwards. I've done a couple tests and the pieces do not come in contact with the blade after they've been finished cut. So how this will work is I have the board here and I've cut these pieces off like this so then when I go ahead and flip this over they get into a chevron pattern with something like that and I can glue them together like I have with this one and then what I do is cut with the table saw along an edge right here and here to give me square pieces. So this piece will be cut like that and like that and then from there I can go ahead and cut the angles that will form the ring. I have all the individual pieces hot glued to these waste blocks and what I'm going to do is take these strips and run them up against the fence of my table saw so that way I can cut a clean edge off and I can make the, each piece into a rectangle. To cut the angle on all of the pieces, I'm gluing them down to a waste board and then I will be able to run that waste board through the table saw with the blade on an angle to cut the correct angle so that all the pieces can come together in a ring.
I can glue those angle pieces into half rings because the angle isn't perfect. But to solve that, I can take them to the disc sander and sand the edge flat so the two halves will mesh back together. Once I have the rings fully together, I can glue them up into pairs first, which will stop them from slipping around and allow me to get the alignment correct. And then I can take those pairs and glue them together and slowly work my way up until I have the entire barrel done. Right now I'm creating the cap for the baseball bat. This is going to be made out of walnut and because it is a face grain to face grain glue up I can just use glue and a little bit of weight. With the barrel of the bat complete I can now move on to the handle. It is going to be made out of yellow heart with a walnut end cap. Now to join the walnut end cap and the handle, I'm going to be connecting them with a dowel as, is, as, is, as it is an end grain to long grain glue up. This means that the joint will fail if put under stress, which I do not want. Now as my lathe bed is not long enough to accommodate this bat, I brought it into my high school wood shop, which I'm currently a fourth year in, and turned it on that lathe. This is a Powermatic from the 40s. It has a variable speed control, and it is actually not terrible, it is quite fun to work with. I like working with the older machines as it gives me a sense of carrying on a tradition of woodworking. A big thanks to Mr. Paul for letting me use the lathe even while other classes had to use it. With this turning, I'm taking it very slow as there's quite a bit of chatter. To deal with that, I'm using carbide tips because they're sharper and they can take smaller cuts. That there in the background is a homemade steady rest that I made. It's made of roller skate wheels and made of plywood. It does a great job of stopping vibrations when you're turning. And there's a larger shot of it. To be more efficient I used two tool rests and two banjos throughout the turning so I wouldn't have to keep taking it on and off and moving the steady rest just to turn a different spot. For finish, I'm using a combination of boiled linseed oil and polyurethane. I'm brushing it on and letting it sit for about 20 minutes, and then coming back and wiping off the excess. This stops too much dust from getting on the bat and provides a very nice shine. This baseball bat is made out of 1,283 different pieces. It took me around 50 to 60 hours to make over the course of two months. To answer a couple common questions that I got in the previous baseball bat video, no, you cannot use this in an actual baseball game. While glue joints are technically stronger than the wood that surrounds them, they do not have the elastic strength that normal wood does, so it would probably shatter. The bat is hollow, however I did stabilize it with a little bit of epoxy so that the joints were fully tightened.
Well, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. Frank Howarth also made a baseball bat, and you can check out his video right here. His has a pretty unique twist, and I think you'll like it. Thank you very much.